is Warframe worth playing in 2024? The answer is yes, but in reality, it's a little bit more complicated than that, and that's what we're going to be covering in today's video. Hey guys, what's up, Zyflin here, and I recently returned to Warframe after quitting it back when the Angels of Disarmament update launched. I quit because I didn't like how we were expected to farm Void Plumes at the time. The main method of farming this resource to rank up the Holdfast standing was by running around, searching for the plumes, picking them up, and hoping that you got the plumes that you needed to progress to the next rank. Thankfully, since then, DE have added more game modes where you can farm the plumes that you need, and I've also added in quality of life changes that make this specific farm that made me quit back then a lot easier. Warframe has always been and always will be a game about grinding loot. Putting in hours to farm for something has never been a problem for me, but what did build up as a problem over the course of a few years, at least in my opinion, was the quality of gameplay or certain activities that you needed to do to farm up the gear that you wanted. Whenever you say the game's title, Warframe, out loud, if you have no prior context or knowledge on what the game is about, what would you think about? You would probably think about an action game of some sort. So let's say you download Warframe, expecting a cool action game, and then for the most part, you get that. The movement is good, the gunplay and melee is good, Good, the characters all have interesting designs and the combat just has a good flow to it. And then I turn around and I hit you with the harsh reality which is if you want to have some of the best gear in the game you have to fish or you have to mine or you have to run around the map and look in these tiny rooms and hallways to pick up these tiny glowing items. You go from playing what is advertised to you which is Warframe the action game to then fishing simulator or mining simulator or fetch quest simulator. Then add the element of RNG into the equation and sometimes these grinds became more frustrating than they really needed to be and ultimately made me want to close the game more often than not. I'm not complaining about a fishing game mode or mining game mode existing within Warframe. I definitely think that these gameplay systems have their place within the Warframe universe, but what does turn me off is whenever I have to fish or I have to mine for one of the most powerful weapons in the game. It totally sucks me out of the fun gameplay loop that Warframe has with its combat and modding system. Fishing and mining is the Warframe equivalent of padding. I think these game modes should complement Warframe's lore and universe and reward you with very specific things rather than being a core thing that you need to do to get something such as an incarnate weapon for example. And for those of you who don't know, incarnate weapons are currently the go-to weapon type in the game as they take already existing weapons or brand new weapons and add really strong bonus effects which basically turn them into entirely different weapons. Recently more of an effort is being made by Digital Extremes to keep the focus on the actual Warframe gameplay rather than the fishing mining, hunting, or fetching. A lot more gear has been added to the game that expands how the player can mod and customize their Warframe or their entire loadout. Warframe used to be a game that was about putting together the best loadout possible to survive for the longest time you possibly could in the likes of defense missions, survival missions, and interception missions. We then went through a period of time where making the best, longest lasting, strongest loadout didn't matter because what happened was that DE made less important the game was that required you to really optimize your frames and gear. Everyone was running missions like capture missions because they became the most optimal way to farm things such as prime frames and their relics for example. And that period of time where the shorter, straightforward, less challenging missions were the most popular was the period of time where players like myself were the most frustrated with the game because we were farming this new gear for it to basically collect dust in our inventories as we had no reason to really use it. We could just stick to the same old same old and get through almost all the content just fine. Fast forward to today, April 2024, there are more game modes that are a lot more up to date and enjoyable. There are more reasons to come back to the game on a daily or weekly basis depending on where you're at on your Warframe journey. The Daviri Paradox update that released April 2023 brought a new game mode called The Circuit which rotates out rewards for both newer players and more end game players on a weekly basis. For newer players, The Circuit rewards you with all the items you would need to craft the frame you've never had before and gives you a few items here and there that will help you put together a build for that frame that you're farming from The Circuit for that week. For players who are closer to end game or are able to do steel path missions, the circuit rewards you with incarnate adapters, which as mentioned previously, they allow you to take an older, maybe outdated weapon like the Latron for example, and turn it into something totally different with powerful effects like stripping so much of an enemy's armor per shot landed. This new circuit game mode single-handedly gives you a reason to farm and make a build for every frame, and you could argue almost every weapon in the game, as every time you enter the circuit, you're given a select few set of frames and 
weapons to choose from to take into your circuit run. Some people are going to love that and some people are going to hate that and I can see the argument for both sides. If you get unlucky and you get a selection of frames that you don't have good builds for, you're going to be stuck with the default build that they give you and your run is probably going to be a bit less enjoyable than if you got your favorite frame with your go-to build. But you don't have to worry about not being super optimized in the circuit because with every objective that you complete you're granted a decree and you can spend this decree on a random bonus effect that can make your frame or weapons more powerful for that run alone. You can spend as long as you want in the circuit and build up a ton of decrees to become super powerful. It's actually really fun. The other side of the argument is that your gameplay is going to become more varied, therefore less boring. And as someone who loves putting together min-max builds and builds that allow you to run missions optimally, the game has never been in a better state for build diversity. There are so many different kinds of already existing mods that have different effects. We're really spoiled for choice nowadays. I'll give you guys an example. Back in the day, there was just one version of the Intensify mod, and this increased your ability strength by 30%. Then they released Umbral Intensify, which increased strength by 55% and upwards if you had additional Umbra mods on. Now we have four different versions of Intensify. The regular version, the Umbra version, the Archon version, and a version called Precision Intensify. Each one of these mods gives you more ability strength, just in a slightly different way that allows you to really tweak and optimize your builds further. And the same can be said for so many different types of mods in the game. There are now more versions of the flow mod which increases your energy, more versions of vitality, etc etc. On top of that, D have also been trying to bridge the gap between newer player and optimized player and the biggest example I can give of this is actually Arcanes. DE have made Arcanes more accessible across the board by making them drop more frequently in missions that are more commonly run, adding in new ways to dissolve Arcanes to get new ones and by running events which make farming more rare Arcanes such as Arcane Energize more common. The knock-on effect of this is that every Everyone has more powerful loadouts, especially when you consider the amount of options you have when it comes to modding nowadays, and the platinum prices of all the arcanes just plummet, they go down. This is something that D have been doing with a lot of different things for a very long time, making what was once rare, valuable, or pricey more common, easy to get, and less valuable. What this basically means is that people are trading far less platinum, and more platinum is being bought or spent to go directly towards things such as deluxe skins, slots, or new packs that are added into the game. Like, unless you are extremely unlucky, I don't see or hear of many players buying full prime sets anymore, as full prime sets are extremely easy to get nowadays, just as another example. I'm very on board with the idea of bringing more players to a certain level of power by giving the players more options and resources to get there, but we've only really scratched the surface when it comes to how powerful players can actually become in Warframe 2024. There are more ways than ever to kill an entire room of enemies. There are more ways than ever to keep yourself alive. There are more ways than ever to keep your energy sustained. There are more ways than ever to strip enemies' armor. There are more ways than ever to spread status effects across an entire room of enemies. And there are more ways than ever to increase your crit chance and crit damage. I'm probably missing something but you get the point. There is no way on earth moving forward that DE will be able to balance this game to make more challenging content without literally ripping away or disabling something that you're used to. Take the latest mechanic Overguard as an example. This is a health bar on top of your health bar that makes you knockdown immune, status immune, and can easily be topped up or refreshed at the press of one button. Of course, only certain frames can do it, and some may even need an augment mod, but Overguard combined with shield gating, combined with rolling guard, combined with other Warframe abilities that aid in survivability, and arcanes or abilities which crowd control or kill enemies, the only way that you're dying in this game now is through something totally random one shot in you in the split second that all of your means of survivability are down, if that ever happens. And there is really no excuse to not be this powerful in Warframe now, everything just comes down to time. How much time are you willing to invest into the game to become as powerful as possible? You don't even have to run what is optimal anymore, to be totally honest. As long as you understand the general idea behind how a Warframe or weapon is built, or what type of enemies you're going against, anything you can throw together with what you have is gonna probably suffice. Gone are the days of having to run the best. Run what is comfortable, run what you have, and run what makes the mission you're doing as easy for you as possible. Pick the frames that you like that are good in the game modes that you frequent. Warframe's meta, what you should be building towards if you want the best loadouts, isn't something that can be used against level 9999 because the percentage of players that are actually doing that type of thing, it's really small. 
Admittedly, it is fun to watch that type of gameplay, but it's also overly complicated for your average player who has no interest in doing that type of stuff. What I think you should be aiming for are loadouts that are going to allow you to efficiently run the missions that you're farming, such as disruption missions or Archon hunts, for example. And moving forward, that's how I'm going to approach making builds for frames. For example, how can I make an Ash build that's efficient yet comfortable to play in disruption missions? The reason I recommend just focusing on running things efficiently if you're coming back to Warframe is because the game already demands a lot of your time via outdated game modes. And what I mean by outdated game modes are things such as your defense missions, your survival missions, your excavation missions, basically game modes that for the most part have you standing around waiting for a timer to tick down or something that doesn't really scale well in the steel path content like defense or excavation because all it takes is a few bad random teammates or a spotty internet connection for what you're defending to go from 100% HP to 0% HP and there you go you just wasted 20 to 40 minutes of your time. These timer based missions are scattered around the place randomly and really break up the flow of gameplay especially nowadays considering the fact we have some really well designed proactive game modes in the form of disruption, void flood, etc etc. Basically anything that came with the Angels of Disarmament update and is on that tile set like those game modes are pretty solid and I wish we see more of those types of game modes rather than the old Warframe types of game modes. Game modes where the player can directly influence how speedy the mission gets completed to add some element of a build or skill gap can really make the difference between a player like myself being invested in the game or saying well what's the point in playing if I've got nothing really to achieve instead of just standing around. Speaking of achieving, what is there to achieve in Warframe now? Well like stated at the beginning of the video, Warframe is and always will be a grinding game so the main point is to grind up all of the gear that's added into the game be that new frames or weapons most of the recent gear releases have been pretty good you can point at almost all of the recent frame releases and say yeah that frame is good at melee or nuking for example in their own unique way there are archon shards that were introduced with the veilbreaker update after the new war these shards give you additional bonuses and effects that can be earned on a weekly basis from multiple different activities. These shards are definitely the most sought after thing in the game right now because they can literally replace entire mods on your builds if used in the right quantities. You can't trade Archon shards, which I think is actually a good thing. It gives you a reason to come back to the game every week and do multiple activities, much like the circuit. Archon shards are somewhat difficult to obtain for newer players or players who don't play the game as often as a weekly basis, but that's okay as they definitely aren't necessary to enjoy Warframe even in its in-game content they just open up more ways of modding for pretty much the same outcomes. So what can we look forward to whenever it comes to the future of Warframe? Like if you're watching this video in April 2024 you might be thinking to yourself Warframe is still Warframe we can just get even more powerful and more interesting ways and have slightly more fun game modes to play and for the most part you'd be right that is the difference between old Warframe and now but also another major difference is the creative director of Warframe. It's no longer DE Steve, it's DE Rebecca. And for the most part, since Reb has been in charge, they've been making moves. They've been saying things on dev streams that you could get optimistic about. From my perspective, the focus seems to be geared more towards developing a narrative for the game story-wise that's more digestible, cool, and far less confusing, while also adding new meaningful gameplay mechanics modes and gear opposed to what Warframe kind of used to be which was this confusing long drawn out stories and grinds which got us things like a real jack or necromex for example and while these things do have their place in Warframe now the journey to get a real jack or a necromex both on the developer side and the player side was quite a long and tedious process and I think that many players including myself are confused when it comes to let's say real jack's future within the Warframe universe now because real jack itself it isn't bad like it could be expanded on and made great it's just a question of when and how should it take priority over just developing content where we play as our frames or our operator. Also there is the actual Daviri Paradox which I haven't really mentioned at all outside of the circuit but basically the Daviri Paradox is DE testing the Warframe player base waters for their up and coming Souls like game that DE Steve is currently working on, Soul Frame. So if you like Souls like combat and you like Warframe give the Daviri experience a try you're gonna have to for incarnate weapons anyway and then if you like that there's a high likelihood that you're gonna enjoy soul frame but i don't really know what soul frame is gonna be like i'm just taking a guess based on what i've seen of soul frame and also what i've played of the, the very experience so yeah the only real negative thing that i have to say about warframe in its current state is the bugginess and the connection issues these seem to be more prevalent with the introduction of crossplay. i've been getting into lobbies where my game feels far more delayed than normal 
whenever someone with a fervor away or an inconsistent connection is the host. That's obviously whenever I feel it the most, but whenever I'm the host, most things feel fine. I'm wondering how you DE determine who is the host for a lobby whenever you're just queuing for a public game, as that seems to be where I have the most issues. And as for bugs, they probably have a long list of bugs that they want to sort through. They do happen often enough that they can become frustrating, but because there isn't really any rush to do anything in the game at this point, if you get frustrated, you can just take a step back and come back whenever you want to play again. And that's how I'm going to conclude this video. Approach Warframe as an extremely casual game with a to-do list. Don't stress too much about having, you know, the best gear in the game. Just get gear that works and gets you through the missions that you're playing. And that way you're going to be able to enjoy all of the upcoming content that DE release at your own pace using a loadout that's fun to you. I'll be releasing a lot of guides covering all of the new stuff that came out that I haven't covered, including some of the difficult boss fights and farms. So make sure to subscribe for all of that. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of Warframe in its current state. And I'll see you guys in the next video.